Miracy. Long ago, in ancient India, a ten-headed monster called Ravana the Rakshasa kidnapped a king's beloved wife. The king was named Sri, or Lord, Rama, and his queen was named Sita. Everyone loved the king and queen because their hearts were pure. Sri Rama set off to rescue his wife with the prime minister of the monkey king, Sri Hanuman, leading an army of monkeys. They traveled until they came to a vast sea that they would have to cross to reach Ravana's kingdom. Sri Rama attempted to calm the raging ocean by shooting his magic arrows into the waves. But the king of the sea rose up and said, The seas cannot be overcome by force, but only by building a strong bridge. So Sri Rama ordered the monkeys to construct a stone bridge that could hold his entire invading army. Hi, I'm Lisa Bloom, the Story Coach, and you're listening to Once Upon a Business. In each episode, we explore a story, a fairy tale, folk tale, or traditional story, so that we can discover the amazing lessons relevant for business and for entrepreneurs. To build a bridge, monkey after monkey set to work carrying huge stones and enormous boulders to the seaside. Thousands of monkeys worked ceaselessly, and Sri Rama was pleased. Then the king noticed that a small brown squirrel rushed up and down from the hills to the shore, carrying little pebbles in her mouth. What is that little creature doing, he wondered. The monkeys also saw the squirrel and grew angry. Get out of our way, they screeched. You are too small. You are not needed. The little squirrel looked up and said, I am helping to build the bridge to save Queen Sita. All the monkeys began to laugh. They held their sides and roared and hopped and mocked the little squirrel. We've never heard anything so foolish in our entire lives, they said. The squirrel answered, I cannot carry rocks or stones. I can only lift small pebbles. But that is what I can do to help. My heart weeps for Sita and I want to be of assistance. The monkeys moved the squirrel away, but she continued to carry small pebbles and pile them up nearby. Finally, one monkey grew so irritated that he lifted the little animal and threw her into the air. The squirrel cried out, Rama! The Lord lifted his hand and caught the squirrel safely in his palm. It was just at that moment that the monkeys realized they needed the little pebbles to place between the larger stones to keep the bridge from falling. Lord Rama said to them, Monkeys, never despise the weak or the deeds of those who are not as strong as you. Each serves according to his strength and capacities, and each is needed to make this bridge. With three fingers, Sri Rama drew three lines down the squirrel's back. What truly matters is not the strength one has, but how great one's love and devotion is. From that day forth, squirrels in that region have had three pale stripes on their rich brown furry backs, marks of the great Sri Rama, and that is how the strongest bridge across the sea was built. This is a tale from the Ramayana, the ancient Hindu epic poem of India that from the start sets out and describes an adventure of epic proportions. Within the first few minutes of the story, there's a paradox. We learn that Sri Rama and his abducted Queen Sita are loved by everyone because their hearts are pure. Yet when they travel to save the queen, they reach the raging ocean, and the first thing Sri Rama does is shoot his magic arrows into the waves to try to calm them. The king of the sea rises up and says the seas cannot be overcome by force. So this lord, who is pure of heart, still needs to learn that building a bridge is the way to overcome the raging ocean. It's a great lesson in business where sometimes, despite our greatest intentions, we end up approaching challenges with force rather than with a more gentle, peaceful, and patient approach. I can really relate to this. My natural instinct is to push forward and try to achieve whatever I set my sights on as if determination and forward movement is the only way. 
I remember talking to my friend Jim, who has a small consultancy business. He told me about a new client he was about to close. He said that the first few meetings he'd had with them were very promising. And what's the situation now, I asked. Well, now I wait until they make their decision. I was surprised. I told him he should call and send emails, that following up was super important. He just smiled and nodded. A few days later, he told me that they'd got back to him and closed the deal. Ah, and that's because you followed up, right? But he said no. He said I waited, and when they were ready, they contacted me. I've learned that when we're patient and calm, when we allow things to happen in good time, our goals are much more frequently met. I love the character of the squirrel. She is steadfast and determined and sees the big vision of her role. It reminds me of the famous story of the janitor in NASA. It's told that during a visit to the NASA Space Center in 1962, President Kennedy noticed a janitor carrying a broom. He interrupted his tour, walked over to the man and said, Hi, I'm Jack Kennedy. What are you doing? And the janitor responded, I'm helping put a man on the moon, Mr. President. The squirrel says, I'm helping to build the bridge to save Queen Sita. She doesn't say I'm moving pebbles from here to there. In business, we need to own the largeness of our vision, to really step into what we are creating and not forget the big picture. If we get caught in the minutia, in the day-to-day grind, we can forget the whole reason we're doing what we do. We can lose sight of the vision. And then the work becomes tedious and we can lose our way. The monkeys, though, don't see the squirrel this way. They see her as a nuisance, as something foolish, and they mock her. But the squirrel stands up for herself. She says that she is doing what she can do to help because her heart weeps for Sita. This is beautiful. It's such an important lesson for us in business. We must never lose sight of the heart of what we do. We shouldn't listen to the naysayers, to those who will mock our efforts and not share our vision. And there are plenty of them. I've met so many entrepreneurs who are desperately lonely in their business because so few people can see what they see and don't support or believe in them. And one of the monkeys grew so irritated with the squirrel that he threw her into the air and the squirrel cried out, Rama, and the Lord lifted his hand and caught her. I love this moment because the squirrel had faith that she would be saved and she was. It's a reminder for us to have faith that if we serve in love and with a pure heart, we will be cared for when we need it. There are many times in business when we need to take a leap of faith, and this is a guide as to how to go about it. It's not difficult to make the mistake that the monkeys make. It's easy to criticize other people's business ideas or aspirations, to judge their actions just like the monkeys that bully the squirrel for thinking she can play a part in saving the queen. But who are we to judge? or assume that we know better. It's interesting that Sri Rama didn't punish the monkeys for mocking the squirrel and not recognizing her contribution. Instead, Sri Rama chose to coach the monkeys, believing that they can change. Such a good lesson for us that with guidance, we too can adopt values and behaviors that better serve the public good. And instead of punishing the monkeys and giving them a painful reminder of their meanness, as many other gods in religion and mythology have done. Sri Rama focuses on uplifting and honoring the squirrel by giving her stripes. This is what marks the squirrel as being touched by Sri Rama, and also serves as a reminder to the monkeys and everyone else to value love and devotion. Perhaps this approach is also a reminder to forgive those who hurt us. One of the insights that this story leaves me is the realization that small deeds may have great implications, that sometimes when we feel we are only able to take one small action, well, that might just be exactly what we need to do. I'm Lisa Bloom, and you've been listening to Once Upon a Business. You can find out more about me at story-coach.com. That's story-coach.com. Once Upon a Business is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Making It and Soul Savvy Business. This episode of Once Upon a Business was produced by Cynthia Lam. Mishi Lance and Jeff Govertson assembled the episode. Danny Inney is our executive producer. Post-production was by Post Office Sound. To catch the episodes that are coming up on Once Upon a Business, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening right now. 
And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It really does help us out. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.